go. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 764, and today we are joined by Savannah Westerby and maybe Caitlin, but we don't know where she is. Wait, she's gone at AFK, who knows? Yeah, so this is, it, since we're on episode 700 and something, yeah, this is Savannah's like 50th time on, I think, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think this is just that when you run out of guests, it's like, Sav, so are you busy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on, please. We like to have check-ins with people, you know, see how they're doing every so often on the potty. Mm. Um, and how are you doing, Sav? I am good, thank you. I had my second leg day of the week today, and to be honest, I'm still mm. a little bit stimmed up. <laughs> so <laughs> if I'm a bit jittery, don't mind me. But yeah, it's fucking fine. sick session. Excellent. Um, back in my regular gym. So yeah, see mm-hmm. where we can go from here. Very good. How how's training actually been over lockdown then? How's that been? Um, I mean, anyone who follows me, like I've been very fucking fortunate. You know, I've been in a facility with pretty much everything that I could want, and so mm-hmm. my training hasn't changed an awful lot. I would mm-hmm. say I've maybe been doing. A little bit more compound barbell work than I usually would. Um, like bent over barbell rows, um, mm. barbell RDLs. I had a good run with barbell squats. I'll be keeping in for the foreseeable. But for the most part, you know, like I've been pretty well off, and so things mm. have been able to keep on progressing, which is what we want. You know, for the majority of lockdown, food was very high. I'm still trying to put on as much size as I possibly can as a mediocre genetic little female um so yeah it's all been good and now just kind of rotating a few of the old things that i used to have access to at my usual gym back in um seeing i guess where we can go now that i'm dieting excellent uh what is the so after this cleanup you'll be jumping back into off season for a little while and then when do you see yourself stepping on stage again (laughs) it's a difficult question you know like if you'd asked me immediately after competing or even in new year i'd have been like early 2022 you know it's going to be mm. on you know i'm going to die into the majority of the year that'll be the comeback year that'll be the kind of ifbb figure debut like let's go um but i guess right now a few things have kind of come up like had some blood work back that I wasn't happy with and I mm. want to prove first of all that I can not only get that into a good spot but then maintain that for a good while and during that period I mean I'll absolutely be able to carry on making progress but it won't be at the rate that it maybe would have been if I wasn't prioritizing health for a little bit and I mean again it just <laughs> whenever I'm good enough you know I've made some great strides towards being ready for figure since mm-hmm. last season but I still feel like I'm so so far off where I want to be and so you know I'm happy to play the long game like I'm still 24 I am um, if I don't get on stage until I'm 26 plus I'm willing to kind of accept that at this point wow okay fuck yeah I mean I'm all for a long off season. So if you end up waiting it out, like no harm done, right? In the day, like with me, I have a little bit of a time of strength because I, I want to do another season as a junior. Um, yeah. That last season as a junior. But then after that, I'm happy to just walk away for a while. Uh, that was me last year. I was 23 last year. And so I was like, this is my last chance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. junior bikini, even though it isn't necessarily the class that I want to be in. I just wanted that closure of doing a junior class again. Mm, yeah, for sure. It's, um, yeah, it feels like there's like a, I, th- I think that's what everyone's kind of done, to be fair. Like most people I know have gone, fuck, I want to do juniors again. Like a lot of the people I competed with in 2019, I'll probably end up competing with again, just because they'll also be like, fuck, I want to step on stage again. It's just cool. Because um, I get some consistent competition. Um, what about you, Joe? Where are you at, Joe, right now? Uh, so, <clears throat> health's good. Uh, digestion's really well and getting good at the minute. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I sent some pictures over to you earlier. Mm-hmm. And it's probably the best I've looked. Without a doubt, yeah. So, I don't know. Keep pushing with the off-season. Me and you are training together for the foreseeable future. Yep. But after that, probably jump uh, onto training with Tim or training by myself. 
I thought you were going to say that. jump on Gith and I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look to, depending on where progress is, if everything's where I presume and predict it will be, um, by the end of the year, I will start prep similar time to you next year yeah. and look for a, a show next year. If not, and you I'll... be thinking back end of next year. Towards yeah. August time, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be a similar time of year to my last prep, but I will give myself more time. That's the biggest thing for me is that um, I want to start in much better position, like composition wise, which I absolutely will be, no doubt. Um, but also, I want to still give myself like an extra month, let's say, to to take my time. Yeah. With with loss and uh, really drive performance through as much as possible and not lose um, the strength and stuff that I did last time. Cause um, like, if you look at the start of my 2019 prep, I was like, I was pretty much RDLing four plates at the start of my 2019 <laughs> prep, um, which, and then off the back of that, it got down to like tw- maybe, 150 kilo RDL for like six reps instead, which is a bit poor, you know, considering, you know, I, it, you, I was to, uh, you did have to run yourself into the ground. To exactly. Get into yeah. You, which you which I really don't want to do again. And yeah. I will. I, I mean, I've learned from my mistakes um, from that season. Um, and I feel like I'm now in a much better position to actually call some decisions. Whereas in that first prep, I was I was like hands off. I'll sit in the back seat and let AJ drive. No. Um, well, I know from, for me, when I do do the uh, well, hopefully do the show with you next year. Mm-hmm. I do want to have like an extensive season, so I will compete in as many shows as I can because mm-hmm. I really do want to play around with a few different looks. Yeah, um, and ideally start contest season as lean, as dry as possible, and then maybe play the fuller game towards the end, just because I want to learn about my own body more yeah, so than sure. anything else, unless the placing is exceptional mm. in the first one or two shows. Anyone who anyone who's watching who um, thinks that even as a natty, you can't grow in a contest season, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, it, like, I don't think people realize, like, how much you can still progress even when you're dropping weight like that. Like, I know I did. Um, I, I definitely for a, for a vast period of time in my first prep, like maybe the first three months yep. gained a solid amount of tissue still. Um, and then subsequently lost it all cause I had to fucking pull in loads, but you can still do it. Um, and if you look at certain individuals as well, who do that, like it's crazy how much progress you can make when you start prep fairly lean. Um, so yeah, that's fucking cool, man. I'm excited to prep. Excited to prep with you and Tim because Tim yeah. will be prepping as well. It'll be fun, especially if we hit the same show. But then we need someone to cover the show, so we'll have to call in a, a guest host for the podcast. I absolutely, yeah. We could get a whole rivalry kind of thing going on. <laughs> we need to get. We'll get someone with a boom mic, and we'll yeah. get someone to. Co- we'll get Sav. We'll get Thank Sav you. to commentate the entirety of the show. Well, can you imagine if I also managed to stick to the original plan? Put enough stars on, and I'm on prep next year too. It's I'll just going to be us all shouting, <laughs> fighting, kicking off at each other. It's going to be a shit show. I'll be fine. Well. Me and Joe will be fine. We'll both be natty. We'll be we'll be trying yeah. as well. <laughs> It'll be yeah. even worse. You've got no testosterone. I'll make you cry. I'll just be there. Like, uh, I had that in pre- like last year. There were so many points in prep last year where I should have just got really angry and like fought someone, uh, but I was just like. I don't give a fuck. I'm too tired. No aggression left. <laughs> no aggression. Like I've left it all in the gym. I look like fucking Skeletor. I'll laugh and walk away. That's it. Um, yeah, no, that'd be fucking cool. I'm excited. I feel like definitely next year will be probably one of the biggest seasons for bodybuilding in a very long time, just because there's no barriers to competing at all. Yeah. It's very cool. Fingers crossed. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah. Because Assuming- that's another thing for me. Yeah. Like after, I did the whole COVID prep last year mm. and a handful of shows. I managed to time it perfectly, to be fair, to get a few in before everything went to complete shit again. Mm. And it just, it took so much enjoyment out of it that I was like, I don't want to sign up for that yeah. ever again. Yeah. And so I think even if I was ready this year, I'd still be like, 
do you know what? No, like I can I can hold off. Mm-hmm. I'm good. For sure. I also want to try and do a show abroad potentially next year if I can as well. I want to see what that's like and compete overseas maybe. Uh, Potentially in America, uh, but we'll see. I know that there's the WNBF UK now, which has been announced, which is very cool. So I will definitely be trying to get in that that side of it. Um, I'll be sticking to my UK, the FBA and BNBF, but maybe I'll do a PCA show for the shits and gigs at some point. Um, because chances are, knowing how lean I'll probably be next year, I'll I could potentially do like just a fucking mock show PCA at four weeks out. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm very tempted to do that. That might be a lot of fun. Um, the, the PCA stage shots always look nice for Instagram. So. Yeah, they do. Yeah, um, and also like the not the, this isn't a knock at all on PCA or the Natty Feds, but. Um, that there's definitely a bit of a, a look divide between the two where PCA, you'll typically see a lot fuller physiques and arguably less lean. Um, whereas BNBF, UK, the FBA, they expect you to be string bean. Um, so I will, I will potentially do a warm up show at four weeks out, but not fuck with anything, not change anything, not carb up or any of that shit. Just go into it as is. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Going on from all that talk about different feds, um, a question I had mm. that me and a friend was talking about not, not too long ago was where to compete for a first timer and what to expect from different and certain federations. So doing a PCA show, mm. doing a UK DFPA show, doing a two rows if you're crazy, or any of the other smaller yeah. recognized federations or doing a NABA show or, or whatnot. What would Obviously, you two have competed in across different various federations. I've done quite a lot of them, actually. Um, Started way back. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I've done, God, NPA, um, IBSA, PCA, SMU, NSMUK, and two bros. She made three of those up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. A, B, C, D, e, yeah. I'm a dinosaur and so when I was competing there was none of this like obviously now PCA have dedicated first time as shows which I think is absolutely fantastic you know yeah, if yeah. that was an option for me at the time that would have been there's amazing one. is it October um, this year there's one I think they've got three scheduled in this year yeah. actually yeah so I mean that would have been ideal for me but that wasn't an option back then so back when I was starting out I was doing turn figure at the time and the standard then it's kind of the gold standard best girls for all doing the NABA shows and so that was you know one day I hope I'll be good enough to do NABA North East um, and so I started off doing my very 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 first show was IBFA which was like your budget version of NABBA, basically. Okay. And I also did NPA, which is mm. the kind of just about hanging on by a thread, I think. They're one of the yeah. more yeah. old school natural federations. And so I did that one as well in my first year. But man, if I was competing now, the PCA first time was shows absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, like, even though I did not compete in any PCA shows, um, I've been and watched more PCA shows than I have any of the other feds. Um, like my first, one of the shows that I watched, um, it was in 2018, like November 2018, when I first moved to Birmingham, I watched, I think it was The Worlds in Birmingham. Um, and that was a very cool show to watch. And they're, they're, they're stacked. There was a lot of people there, a lot of first timers. Um, same with any of the other shows. Um that I've been to, they all they all tend to be very first timer friendly, even if they're not first timer shows. Mm. Um, and it seems like they do take care of their lot backstage as well, which is very good. Um, from my perspective, I've obviously done the two big natty feds of so BNBF and UK DFBA. Um, they have, I'm pretty sure what I think I can't remember if it's BNBF or UK UK DFBA. They have a first timer show lineup, I think. But they all their shows are very first timer friendly, um, so you'll always have um, like Glazers and Tanners backstage. Um, UK DFBA they had uh, Nicola Gilbert, A1 Tanning, uh, there on the day uh, to do any touch ups and shit like that. So they're very on it, very organised. Um, 
I'm not sure what it's been like over COVID, but pre-COVID, I can definitely say go for some of the natty feds. Typically as well, if you've never competed before, chances are you're probably natty. Um, and assuming you are natty, yeah, go for it. Get into those feds. That's why I made a lot of the friends who I'm still, I still talk to today and we've had on the podcast. So, yeah. It's, some, it's always something that's crossed my mind just to, because there's a certain prestige about Naba Juniors, right? Mm. At least to me, anyway, because I've looked up to some of the physiques that have won the shows, even when I was like 16, 17, and thought, like, don't get me wrong, some years the standard's not too good. I know Kuba won Naba Juniors in 2014. And, uh, I think 2017, 2018, the standard wasn't very good. And then 2019, standard was really good again. Mm. Um, so that would be something I would be interested in doing, maybe in my final junior season. So mm. we've got another three years till then anyway, even though I look like an old bastard. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's no, um, NABA, NABA holds a bit of prestige in the UK, doesn't it, anyway? Like, NABA is one of those older federations, which is, like, still actually quite popular, um, or so I like to think. So yeah, definitely. I think it's almost trendy how out the loop they are as well. Yeah, exactly. Like some of the federations are so big on you know the social media campaigns yeah. and content and things like that. Whereas that we're just like, no, nah, we'll just pin a few posters up in a few gyms. The people will come. <laughs> yeah. And some of us that's starting to go. Do you know what? We actually need more of that. That's pretty sick. I respect that. Yeah. It's like it's it's like one of the old guard, isn't it? It's just uh, it's all those federations where you always see the people in the bodybuilding lineup with the fucking ball of muscle grainy look and they've all got bald heads and they all just look fucking aggressive. And it's like, there's, there is a charm to that for a lot of people. Um, so if that's sort of something that any of the viewers who are first timers would be interested in, definitely look at that one. And the shows are all pretty local to us. You've got Nabba Midlands, which is about 20 minutes away. And then they usually bring the, I think it's, is it Worlds or, or the British? They bring the, the show to the yeah. town hall anyway. Well, they have yeah. been anyway last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's always nice. So if you are, if anyone's actually going to watch, I don't know about this year, but in the future, the mm -hmm. NABA and the PCA shows are usually like the week, a week apart from each other. Yeah. So you yeah, NABA originally did cancel all shows for this year, but this talk, they've reserved dates for a September and an October potential show, but they haven't released that yet. I think mm. they're kind of still waiting to see how things go so if they can manage to pull that off and then get something rolling again that'd be great because i know yeah. i've had conversations with a few people who've been like you know is this just them saying we're calling it a day and winding it down but i hope not because for me yeah. again when i started out those like old nabba pro guys they were the people that you went to to be your coach you know like mm -hmm. that wall bench yeah, you sure. guarantee and still people that I massively respect in the industry and who I've learned a lot from. And, you know, them guys train fucking hard, like the whole culture around that sort of, you yeah. know, group and that era is still, you know, massive in the UK. Well, it's British blue collar bodybuilding, isn't it really? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, no, no one, like I, I, without a doubt, would probably I, I might not be training the way I train now if it wasn't for those individuals back then in that sort of age. Um, and carrying on that fucking hardcore, like fucking sawdust and iron gym vibe that they have going on. So, yeah, yeah, D dusty old red curtains on the stage. But, yeah, cool. who is it? Um, that we know, Joe, who's going to be competing PCA this year. I, I don't know if he's first time. Eh? Um, William Williams, maybe Engstrom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's maybe doing a UK PCA show. Yeah, he's coming. I know he's coming over in. June or July. I know he's got a client or two doing. Uh, yeah. I think it's a PCA show. Um, mm. And then he's either said towards the back end of the year he wants to come over and compete again. Mm. If it's not, then he'll do a couple of shows over his end in Sweden. But he's looking to to come over for a couple of months and set yeah. up camp over here. I want sure. I want William over here because I was meant to train with him last year, but then just couldn't yeah. figure it out because shit hit the fan. But. Um... Yeah, shout, shout out to William. Big respect. Yeah. Um, our Swedish fan. Um, yeah, what else do we want to talk about in terms of this year? In terms, of, Oh, we've got the fucking Arnold. Yeah, of course, the Arnold. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Arnold Amateurs. 
we, there's yep. going to be that's another show that's going to be happening in the UK. Not that we're going to do, but no, not that I'm doing. No. Maybe eventually <laughs> at some point, but not not this like not this year or next year. Um, yeah, we got the Arnold coming up, and we're watching the pro show, aren't we, Joe? We'll be watching the pro show, and I'm watching the amateur show. So. I'll probably I'm more excited for the amateur show to be. Yeah, to be mate, probably. I'm here. I've I'm here. I'll be there for the whole three days. Yeah, so I'll be vibing because. Um, uh, I have good, well, I say good friends, friends of the podcast and fairly keep in touch, like uh, Greg Taylor, who did, uh, who came third in the heavy, or second, third or second in heavyweights at British last year is doing that. Andy Scott's doing it as well, who's uh, British champion multiple time. Uh, Matt Tofton's doing the show. So it's going to be fucking stacked. And I know, I presume Jack Brook is doing the show as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, he's another British uh, British champion as well. So it's going to be a very very good amateur show. Plus, it's an international show as well. So there's going to be probably some crazy guy from fucking Abu Dhabi coming over, and <laughs> <laughs> as they always do, just yeah. fucking I just monster. can't fucking wait for an expo, man. Yeah. I just want to see people. Like I miss like the last time I went to Body Power was what 2019. That was the years, last time I saw Jack Thorburn. Um, like, yeah. um, obviously AJ was there. Uh, fucking Jack Piard, and he's Jack... even smaller now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. Know, yeah, it's been it's been I a long time. I didn't expect since... that you were going to say that. <laughs> it's a uh, it's been a while since we've had some social interaction. With yes, other pe- yeah, other people in the industry, yeah, so. for sure. So, I'm excited for that. I might be going to Fit Expo, I haven't decided yet. Um, fingers crossed, I can travel because I've got a holiday planned for them. So. But, yes, Joe, we will we will be having merch for them, yes. correct? Yeah, we will, yeah, yes. Uh, just putting everyone on o- there. O- OTS clothing shall be in business, yeah, hopefully a long time before then, yeah, Seven. yeah. Um, I want that OTS hoodie and that OTS beanie ready for an expo. Yeah. That's how I want to pull up. I've got something in the back of my mind as well that we talked about yesterday. I don't want to talk about it yet though, on the podcast. Yeah. Um, that could be quite cool. Um, as sort that of a... side ice is giving us right now. She's like, mm. no. I'm thinking, like, is it going to say something about our souls on it? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's what good, just have... you have in? Yeah, she's got an arsehole on it. The O in OTS will just be an asshole. Yeah, booty hole. There you go. I would buy that. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. My mum would not be happy, though, so I will not do that. But would she wear them? Huh? Would she wear them in support, though? Absolutely fucking not. Can you imagine my mum walking around in a fucking hoodie with an asshole for an O? Have you seen that thing that's going around? Do you know them little clip-ons that you can get for Crocs? Like the little charms? Yeah. There's one that's a scrunchie, like for your hair. But it's a pink scrunchie with like a brown inside. Oh, for fuck's sake. And it's been getting posted everywhere. It's like, oh, it's a scrunchie. Like, what are you mm-hmm. seeing? I might yeah. get uh, I might get some, um, some of those fucking shoes and stick some shit on them. I might wear them at an expo as well. I love shit shoes. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> I love like nice shoes. Like I've got my Jordans on right now, loving life. I've got my Jordans on, but mate, a pair of slides and some just shit like that. Some flip flops. Yeah, great, love it. Yesterday I was mid training, like had headphones on. I should do whatever. This guy whipped me with a lifting strap, <laughs> and so I take my headphones off, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and he makes some comment about my sliders. <laughs> Yes, I'm training in sliders. I've been Unreal. doing it on lockdown. Leave me. Unreal. That's the sort of behaviour you get up north, Joe. That's sort Barnsley, of... specifically. Barnsley. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, Jose, TMU, sorry. Or... Jose, not Joe. Was, uh, this, yeah. was, it, um, was this at TMU? Yeah. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. Yeah, no. Um, Gas Mark 53. Yeah, so um, I will I will be moving back to Sheffield in July, uh, which means I will be training out of Ultraflex Rotherham full time for the foreseeable future. Although I'll obviously go to all the other gyms around, like TMU and whatever else. So you'll see me around. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to um, 
I think I think because I've been in Birmingham so long, I'm ready now post lockdown for a fucking change of pace. Like we're gonna have this fucking awesome three four month run, Joe, um, for this bit of the off season, and then I'll be moving over to there full time, which will be fucking cool. But I will come back. Twenty one years, mate, and I'm still starting to bore me now. So. <laughs> You know, um, it's fucking, it's just, it's just a mess. You can't go anywhere in terms of the travel routes are just fucked. Yeah, yeah, it's fucked, man. It's difficult. Um, but yeah, no, I've had a good run at Birmingham or Ultimate Fitness, so, um, and they've got a bunch of new kit as well, which is fucking... Oh, yeah. We did legs yesterday, for anyone who's watching. Um, they got a brand new Prime leg, uh, leg extension, which is amazing. Gorgeous. We'll uh, they got some new Atlantis equipment as well, which we used on push the other day. The Atlantis shoulder press. We got, we got on a Nata, yes, natural raise, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, very. What was it before? Was it Atlantis before? Yeah, it was an Atlantis before, which I did like. To be fair, yeah. I did like, but um, with that Atlantis, the Atlantis raise, the what the issue it had was like at the bottom for the initial part of the movement. There was no tension. Uh, for whatever reason, the actual band that was on was slack. A seated one. Standing. No. Oh, I like that standing lap raise machine. Yeah. They, have one a, they have one at Ultraflex as well, uh, which is good. But I think it might have just been because the one at Ultimate was quite old. Yeah. It had it for a long time, but it was a bit slack. So you'd go to do a raise, and for the first, like, maybe five Inch. inches of the movement, there was no tension, and then it would kick in. Um Whereas this one is just throughout, so it feels very good. And they got the Prime Extreme Prone Row coming as well next month, which will be cool. Yeah, which is so, annoying because I'm I'm not going to be here. Like, yeah, but you'll still have the same kit up there anyway. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Um, so Sav, TMU, where else are you going to be training this year? Um, I think tomorrow I'm training at Drew Walker's gym, BMO, which is like Cunnersborough, kind of between Doncaster and Rotherham. Um, okay. That's a really good gym if you like, like a real bodybuilding gym, like no bullshit. Yeah. It's a lot of pieces as well. It's like, I couldn't tell you what make they are. I couldn't tell you how fucking long they've existed, but they just feel insane. Do you only sit in a machine and you're like, I've never used anything like this, but yeah. this is the one. It's, so I love yeah. that. That's got some absolute gems in it. Um, I train in Doncaster quite a lot of the time. I mm-hmm. use Ultraflex Nominating for cardio, but that's it. Um, mm-hmm. I train all over there, to be honest. You know, like, I should say that if you're local to sort of South Yorkshire especially, you know, you've got access to so many good gyms around yeah. that kind of area of the country. Yeah, I feel like... Um... I was blessed that I'm around Sheffield and that's where my family is because, oh, my God, it's like a weird little little like bodybuilding cult around there. Like, at one point, I even had Zach Khan's gym like next to the train station, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm excited to come back and um, I'm also excited now that... Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm excited now that we're, I'm back. Like I'll, I'll be going back to Sheffield as well, but I'll just... Or even now that lockdown's fucking over, uh, we'll be able to, like, travel about and train at different gyms and train with people. See, uh, this this was the plan when everything was closed, and now the fucking hermit in me is like, I'm not I'm not training there. It's not part <laughs> of the plan. So <laughs> Yeah, it's just how how consistent do we want to be? We're just going to have to... We do need a session... As a free or a four, yeah, you know, for sure. We're having a four through our paces, so yeah. Why are you saying it like that, for Joe? What do you mean? Never mind. Carry on. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm excited to train with you lot. Um, I've trained with obviously Sav and Caitlin, but Joe, you have not yet, have you? So no. Uh, Fucking go near me place, near me time, from that. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. I'm excited to train with you again, Sav, to be fair, because the last session we had was actually really fucking good. Um, until, until she left you halfway through the session. Oh, <laughs> that... yeah, when I thought you'd gone home, so I was like, oh, oh, I'm late. oh, that feels bad, man. Yeah, I remember messaging you after the fact. That was just really fucking, that was funny. I thought you were like, oh, I was like, oh, she, did, she didn't like training with me. Oh, no. <laughs> but no, it was fine. Yeah, no, I just went for a piss or something, then I came back out and she was gone. Um, no time to waste. 
Yeah. The thing is, though, Caitlin's kind of like that as well. Like when I finished training with Caitlin, um, we sat down for like literally one minute at the tables, like by a reception at Ultraflex. And she's like, right, go, go and eat. And just fucked off. And that's, <laughs> I get it. Like, <laughs> you've been abused for a session. That's, that's what it feels like, honestly. No wonder I'm, I'm going to be so training for sure in my training relationship. Chuck call training, Chuck, and yeah, that one. Joe's the only one who hasn't ditched me. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Don't fuck with my insecurity. Although, although, although we did have a bit of a mare yesterday. Because we, we both got to the gym at the same time, but we didn't know that we were both there. So I was in the changing <laughs> room. Jermaine was on the uh, the seating area in the leg room. And I was just messaging him on Instagram saying, are you here? Hello? Jermaine? And I there? didn't. Ha- I wasn't getting the notification, so I was just sat on this fucking sofa in the leg section waiting for him. And we was both sat in the gym, unbeknownst to each other for about half an hour, <laughs> <laughs> without realizing we were like in the room next door. It's fucking stupid. I've done that yeah. before, though. I've done that before with um, one of my clients who trains there as well. Um, we've been like, "Are you here?" And like, "Yeah." And like, "Where are you?" Oh, I'm here. <laughs> You go there and they've gone downstairs while you've gone upstairs and it's just, yeah. oh, what a mess. It will be nice to get in the posing studio as well. Yes, that is true. Uh, I haven't even, have they, they've redone the up the rooftop, haven't, haven't they? Not. Haven't like, not. They're not astroturfed it again or some shit. I haven't checked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have, yeah. Um, I haven't been up there since they've redone it. So I'll go have a gander. Yeah. Um, what else have we got to cover? Oh, Has here. anything been happening in this week in the bodybuilding world that you know of in the bodybuilding world um or the world in general uh dmx passed away yes yeah, um, that's true. very sad um the ghoulish prince phil passed away as well R- r.i.p um ghoul. yeah now uh, the queen is ready to take her throne for the next a thousand years because she went that, that guy was on that guy was on prep for the last 20 fucking years. oh my god <laughs> Yeah, Phil's been prepping for too long, man. It's finally show day the other day. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, fuck, you know. Not bad, though, 99. Yeah, he did well for himself. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, right? Everyone who I've spoken to about Phil passing away, it's not really like... It's not really Phil, like hang on, the shocking only or really anybody. sad because we all knew it was going to happen, but people are still celebrating his life like, oh, yeah. He he clearly had a good life, you know. He lived ninety nine years. He was a what prick. made me laugh? What made me laugh on the news was breaking news: uh, Prince Philip dies suddenly. I'm like the guys look dead for the last five years. It's not sudden at all. <laughs> We've seen the pictures for the past like three four months of him inside cars coming from the hospital where he doesn't look well. No. Um, yeah, it wasn't really surprising. DMX, however, was very surprising. Yeah. Addiction got to him in the end. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the albums will be living on forever. Uh, yeah, X is still going to give it to you. Like, he's still going to, we're still going to be blasting his music in gyms and stuff. Like, he's still going to be on every single gym playlist ever. Uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Up here. Up here. Um, a fucking great song. Um, what other interesting stuff is in there and it has happened in the world? The fucking UFO shit. Have you seen all this shit that's yeah. kicking off? Are you aware the- of this, Sam? No, um, catch me up to speed. Okay, so the US government has started releasing loads of confirmed clips and tapes from their Navy and their Air Force Department of unidentified flying objects. That are like they they've they're like yes this is it actually our footage and it's filmed by our cameras and our stuff. Um, so post COVID, it's looking like we're going to get them aliens finally. They finally come out of hiding. They're In sick of their lives. They always come out of the US. <laughs> it's never any other developed country. Yeah, for sure. But it's some mad shit. It's always the Americans. Well, because like here's the way I see America. It's kind of like no offense to any Americans watching this. Uh, it's kind of like we, we British people looking at the US is like a bunch of people at the zoo looking inside a gorilla enclosure. Mm. Um, and because just shit happens in there, and it's like, oh wow, it's fucking just nuts. And everything in America it. is a stereotype, yeah. Everything, yeah, 
it's yeah, absolutely. Ster- it's the stereotype of certain individuals lasted yeah. you to, go to you go volume. like when i fir- the first time i went to new york you feel like you're walking into a movie mm-hmm. everyone acts like you're there like crazy shit can happen in new york you walk down the street and everyone walks past it like it's normal mm. meanwhile you're there like what the fuck just happened um and yeah it doesn't really surprise me um but they've apparently there's another thing saying that they have to release like a, like tons of stuff about ufos by like a certain date this year um because of data protection or some shit so yeah we're gonna be getting those ufos um it's about time to be honest mm. it's been, it's been pending. <laughs> yeah. The that, yeah at least at least the uh you have like something visual to be scared of. No. Yeah, at least you know you can see the problem. You know, when there's a yeah. giant tentacle monster walking down the street. I mean, you can see the problem at the minute. You know, they, they all wear suits and stuff, but it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, They're all reptiles. Yeah. 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 I remember that episode of South Park and they just unzip themselves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now we had uh, a few questions, and it's pretty much all regards to. Uh, energy drinks and and freeze so of course first one was top three 3d energy flavors sav you can plug purple 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 is the one um so purple's great the grape one i agree best um i'd say over to the orange on a warm day when it's cold fucking bangs it's like it's so much more concentrated orange flavor than like a fanta um banging um third white is just like a white monster safe option probably oh, green. i found out as well when i was in the co-op the other day the woman on the checkout because they had the fucking uh, is it ultra fiesta the green monsters mm. and uh she went oh this is a new one and I can't remember. Tropical something is the flavor because on there too, it comes up with the actual flavor of the drink, mm. not the name. So the white one is tangerine flavor. That's bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's white flavored. But yeah, 3D, purple, orange, mm. green. So I, I've been waiting for a while for it to kind of come more over to the UK. I tried the great we one. We produce it in the UK. Yeah, like it's good. I, I tried the grape one in 2019, in March 2019, because there was a fucking Alphalete launch event and I went to it because I was like, oh yeah, Alphalete. Um, and did, you to, um, did you go Bethnal Green? Sorry. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I was with Tim, Thomas Roundtree, and I can't remember who else was there, but we all went as a crew. Um and yeah, we just got, they just handed out a bunch of free 3D energy drink samples, which is fucking awesome. And grape has always been my favorite. Like years later, still the best one. So I like the. I want uh... to clarify um, when I say we, I work for the company that produces all of the EU stock because there are slight differences between the EU and the US. Mm-hmm. So I do have a link in my bio. Yeah. So everyone, go look at Sav's bio for that link tree and uh, get yourself a discount. I like the yeah. uh, the blue, white, and red one. Red's my least favorite, you know. But blue's, for me, blue's it reminds... all right. I like blue. No, the, the blue, white, like and red can. Old school fruit and pre workouts. Yeah. That's what red tastes like to me. And I don't do that like old school C4 <laughs> fruit punchy flavor. See, I've always liked that flavor because I used to like, I've grown up on a fucking KA fruit punch. Oh, so yeah. It tastes the same. Um, <laughs> I like the, I don't know, is it like American flavor or whatever the fuck it is? Red wine, boom. Uh, the Olympic yeah. puff. Yeah, so I like that as well. Right, one. So, I haven't yeah, tried that one fun. yet. And then the green can, whatever that is, I can't remember. Green's okay. Oh, yeah. mm, yeah. Green's okay. Good stuff. Um, I, I'm, I'm enjoying rain right now. I quite like rain energy drinks. Can't be awesome. Lemon's the only good one. I quite like watermelon. Me too. Yeah. I'm a watermelon guy. Lemon and watermelon are pretty good for me. I like those. Although too. the best watermelon one that I've ever had is by Ray's. Okay. Watermelon Frost is really good. I've not had it. I, 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 I'm waiting for 3D to come out with a decent watermelon flavor one. That's what I want. I want a really nice watermelon energy drink. 
I'd that do. would be good. Mm -hmm. For me, any carbonated BCAA drink like a rain, I hate that nasty aftertaste that I have. So, like, if anyone remembers like the moose juice drinks that were out years yeah. ago, <laughs> I used to sell them at like first supplement industry job that I had. Yeah, I hate that aftertaste, and I just I get flashbacks. I had those in prep, didn't I, Joe? Do you remember? Yeah, I used I like, to have I like the um the blue can moose juice. It's yeah, right. the moose juice. I used to have that in prep. I realized now well, that the taste. Yeah. It, I only liked it because it was just fucking obscenely sweet and tasted like sugar. I was yeah. in prep, but that's probably the only reason I liked it. <laughs> to have it like 6 a.m. mid pose and stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that's oh. a fucking throwback. I'd just be caffeinated off my tits while running posing with you yeah. at 6 a.m. in the morning. Oh, geez. Yeah, no more moose juice now. I'll, I'll stick to 3D or rain or just a straightforward monster. Just a white monster. Yeah. Still good. Does the job. Never been, never been a fan of Red Bull ever. Red Bull to me just tastes like underage drinking. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I agree. Just you know, like when you're like yeah. 14 years old and you'll drink shit mixed with anything. Yeah. I, just, I, I can taste it coming back up. It, it's just like 17, just about to turn 18 year old Jermaine in um, Dempsey's or a club in Sheffield. Just absolutely pounding Jaeger bombs like no tomorrow. That's what it makes me think of, and I hated that me. I don't want to go near it. Ugh, fucking Jaeger yeah, bombs. Even man. the smell of it for me, I just get yeah, like trauma. Just, yeah, like yeah, that. it's PTSD. It's awful. Yeah. No, thank you. No Red Bull. It gives you wings though, apparently. Yeah, and then you collapse afterwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. Never been. A I used to love Powerade as a kid. That was good. Powerade. Lucas Aid. I liked Lucas Aid. Like the pink one. Yeah, pink grapefruit. One. Yeah, yeah. I like that so, one. There's a lack of pink grapefruit flavoured shit on the market. It's because grapefruit is like a bit of a niche. It's really tart, but as a pre, that would be nice. Mm. Um, there was the, oh, what was the EAA flavour from... Um, oh, um, OMG. OMG, yeah. Uh, orange, mango and grapefruit um, EAA. So that, was, that was fucking good. That's a good flavour. I had I had I, I had that in prep. I just that that was so easy to drink as well. It was literally like fucking fruit punch, which is probably not good. Um, but yeah, no, I like that one. Um, next question, Joe. Do we have another question that you can? Give yeah, us? I wanted to bring something up, and that was the importance of an intra workout, mm. and if it's important or not, and what's in yours. Obviously, you made a video the other week explaining what I'm taking at the minute. So. Yeah. Um intra workout i i think to be honest for the majority of people water maybe some electrolytes <laughs> probably like let's be honest i think we're all pretty much agreed if you are eating a sufficient amount of protein splitting mm -hmm. it into pretty regular pretty even feedings across mm -hmm. the day that small you know five ten gram of essential amino acids during your training probably isn't going to help you build muscle or significantly prevent you you know losing any muscle yeah. but we all buy them anyway because they taste great yeah i think at a certain level depending how long your training sessions are how intense your training sessions are how many carbs you have to spare you know how hungry you are i do personally rate intra carbs for me but it's not something that i would give the majority of my clients because quite frankly they haven't earned the right to be putting them to use mm. yeah i agree um again as yeah i agree like the first thing that i always say to people because i typically when people ask you about the like training and working out and getting into the gym they always ask you oh what fucking protein powder do you take mate and that's yeah. always the fucking first question it's like no food first then when you when when you've optimized stuff, then it's worth buying that shit because that's when it'll actually matter and it'll mean something and you'll notice the difference. Yeah. Uh, if you've not got those basic things in place, so training's good and consistent and recovery's fine generally, your food's good, and then actually like sleep and like all that side of it, there's no fucking point getting into that conversation because you're not doing what you need to do to warrant doing that kind of stuff um of course that's very generalized like i was six 15 16 
getting into this, figuring shit out for myself, not knowing what the fuck I was doing. And I was like begging my mum to let me buy creatine because she thought it was steroids. Um, and like, you'll you'll get that. But like, to begin with, get those basics nailed. Then you can get into the conversation of cyclic dextrin, um, EAAs if necessary, um, a pre-workout, um, creatine, um, electrolytes, all that shit. So, Yeah, I agree with both of you guys. I, I do use one with carbs and EAAs and a mixture of glutamine and creatine and yeah. uh, electrolytes as well. But <clears throat> it's just, it's a preference for me. I like, I just enjoy doing it. I, I do, even if it's placebo, I feel that it enhances my recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of keeps potential inflammation down mm-hmm. in terms of what I'm eating pre-workout if the meal's smaller mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but I, I, I put a question into another podcast the other week and it was about, is it acceptable to, to use an EAA product as long as it's sufficiently dosed? as a protein source in just, just a meal throughout the day. And Joe Binley was absolutely an advocator of it. And because he and Dom Cardone have worked with so many people with digestive issues, dropping protein amounts, even in half to maybe 80 grams cook weight um, with a, a scoop of a, a good, like a amino tour or something like that, um, mixing it in to potentially limit digestive disruption um it's they've not seen anything any hindrance of progress or anything like that so if anyone is struggling with uh digestion or anything like that it's something to look look into for sure yeah. that's um, an interesting topic i mean when, when you i look- push food up in the future future yeah. which i will it, that is something i will yeah. look into if i am having any issues but obviously it's a specific mm. case it's not for the yeah i would say for for your niche joe Mm. And going about that, that makes perfect sense. The same as like when we spoke to Joe about um, alternating and mixing protein Protein. sources, stuff like that makes perfect sense in terms of managing digestion and getting the most bang for your buck. Um, I think, however, for the general population, um, it's perfectly optimal to have your general bolus of food, like just having like no more than 40 grams of protein per meal, typically for the average person is optimal. Uh, because that will give you the sufficient MPS spike that you'll need. Yeah. yeah. Any thoughts, though? Yeah, I mean, I think if... <laughs> First of all, I mean, I would question, if you've kind of reached a protein intake where, say, you're getting... I'm not even going to throw a number, so it completely depends the size of the person, yeah. how much of their total mass is muscle, you know, how many meals they're having each day. But if you are having a good amount of protein in each meal and then you add 10 grams of protein to each meal and all of a sudden you constantly feel like you're going to shit yourself I would maybe question why you're so adamant on increasing protein over other macronutrients Mm -hmm. do you know rather than trying to force in through like oh well you know if I just have like 20 grams of EAAs or something like Mm -hmm. that maybe first of all look at switching to even like a clear way if any of you've seen those the isolates that mix more like a juice yeah this the thing. Maybe do that me, before me, increasing total protein. Yeah, to, to me, a clear way is. Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's just a. It's a poor man's EAA because the EAA is already a pre-digested, broken down ISO. Um, and if funds warrant it, I would opt for that. But obviously, it's a lot more expensive using a. Uh, EAA product over a, a clear way. I have used a clear way before, and it's, it's fine. It tastes good. Um, yeah. I've never personally used a clear way, but I will say, having that EAA and sipping on that, I I used to do that in prep. I would mm-hmm. I would have um, like just one scoop of EAA, mix that with I don't know a liter of water or something, and sip yeah. on that over the course of a day, like in between meals or whatever. And it does it does make a difference when you're when you've got stuff like that nailed. That's, absolutely that's, makes that's the difference though, because it is scenario dependent. Like exactly. you, were, you were in the gutters. There's, exactly. there's nothing else you could have done mm. with the goal of getting on stage is like a looking like a big walnut that you could have done to you couldn't add food in here yeah. or there. You know, you'd fuck yeah, you'd sure. fuck yourself. So yeah, absolutely. That's that. Absolutely. Um 
Actually, there is something that I saw, I've been seeing circulating on Instagram recently. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'll try and find it. But it's about it's nudes, is it? Uh, Sav, you might have even posted it. It was a post about how um, the future of online coaching and this sport about how yeah. you would yeah, be yeah. left behind if you don't start considering things like blood work, hormonal <laughs> balance, and, uh, you know, yeah. et cetera. Uh, I wanted to touch on that and get your guys' actual thoughts on that because I think that's a really, really valid point. Yeah, I I think, to be honest, I mean, even some of my more gen pop clients, I have asked for bloods for certain things. For example, I'm yep. sure she won't mind me using hair as an example, but I have a client who has chronically very, very elevated breast and heart rate. And I mean, she's very healthy weight. She's very active. Her diet's great, you know, like everything's in place. She sleeps well. We've looked at things like I've asked her, you know, subjectively, how is your stress? We've added in adaptogens, things like ashwagandha to try and bring down any stress that she's maybe, you know, not even registering. And it's not coming down. And so something that I'm very interested to see in her is I want to test her writing and I want to also see what a thyroid panel looks like. I think understanding things like that, understanding how blood markers can play into the great picture of things, understanding Mm. my clients having this issue, this symptom, this could be correlated with, you know, it might be the lipid panel, it could be vitamin D related, being able to make that connection. Obviously, there's going to be clients who they don't really give a shit. They just want to lose 10 pounds. They just want to look good to go on holiday. They want a meal plan. They want a macro plan. But I think if you want to work with, a high level client or if you want to have long-term clients it's not just a quick eight-week transformation client I think it pays to educate yourself on these things and I mean I even myself I have consultations with people like Joe Jeffrey like Victor Black you know I pay that money to better my knowledge because sometimes I will spend two hours Falls deep in PubMed and research gate, reading all these papers, mm. top to bottom, back to front. And I still think, okay, but I wonder how maybe if I applied it to this or maybe if that was in that scenario. And I want to pick someone's brain on it. Yeah, for sure. Um, touching on the whole PubMed thing as well. Um, I, I highly recommend, obviously I'm a fairly new coach to the space but I would highly recommend uh, getting yourself a Zotero folder. So downloading Zotero on your computer, it just lets you instantly download any articles you want off of the internet, off of PubMed, off of whatever academic site you want to look at that kind of stuff and just puts it all in the folder. And I've literally got a folder of over 100 papers currently based around um, menstrual cycles, um, looking at, you know, effectively periodizing training around the period. Um and that is something that I'm very much interested in. And that's why I actually chose it as a dissertation topic for my degree. Because I think that is kind of going to, especially as we progress, that's going to separate like the 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 lower level coaches from the actual high level coaches in the same way that getting a PT qual separates you from having a level four coaching qual, you know, and shit like that. So I I... I think it's a very important topic to cover because I know for sure I've encountered it where I've had a client who um, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter how much you like do in terms of optimizing recovery, uh, dropping food within reason, of course, they just won't lose weight. And then you've got to start asking those questions of, okay, is there something else going on here? Like that you can't see and have that conversation with the client so yeah definitely very poignant i think something to note as well is it's okay sometimes to admit if you are not an expert on a certain topic or to refer a client on or to say do you know what like i'm really sorry i don't have the answer right now let me go away and learn that because i as a coach i have my areas of knowledge i'm extremely interested in like Mm -hmm. The things to do with hormones is like that's my shit. I will spend hours mm. reading about HRT and females and reading about PCOS mm. and reading about things like that. But if you take me to all Trek Swatherham and you go, oh, Savannah, what's the strength curve on that? What's the resistance profile on that? I don't know. You know, that is yeah. not an area that yeah. I have invested time bettering myself in. Mm. And so I think 
again, you know, like just because maybe it's cool to talk about X, Y, Z topic, you can maybe admit like, I'm not completely there on this subject mm. yet, or you might be better yeah. speaking to this person about that, or if you want coaching that's specific to, I don't know, maybe someone's diabetic, mm. you might say another coach is better for you. Yeah, for sure. I do you think that's why the Muscle Mentors have had such success, is because they're all very knowledgeable on one aspect of whether it's training, nutrition, you've got people who are interested in hormones, you've got other guys who are very into nutrition and recovery and then you got luke who's into his anatomy the minute for the most part and filling in the gaps working in a team is a lot more efficient way of coaching i do think you're going to see you've seen it already with with joe and everybody over on on the physique collective as well they fit where some people may need a little hand up the next person could come along and fill in that gap um with their knowledge at that time Mm. And that's not to say that everyone shouldn't have a base understanding of, of the whole pie. But I think when you're getting into real specific, specificity, um, it's always nice to, to have a second pair of eyes, even as a coach. That's mm. why so many good coaches work with other coaches is yeah. because they, they want to learn. And it's that whole debate that's still going on of, oh, you shouldn't get a coach who has a coach. It's fucking stupid. Mm. it's like yeah. saying you sh- you shouldn't listen to a teacher who's had a teacher before it's yeah, it's nonsensical it's like yeah. it just makes no sense yes i i want to have someone teach me stuff who's not been taught anything themselves yeah what like or is actively trying to learn or yeah anything. I think I think that's very important. And like like I know for myself, I'm trying to carve a little bit of a niche here in terms yeah. of it's kind of almost fallen on, on my lap. Um, but to sort of optimize coaching for female clients, uh, yeah. especially. Um, like in future, I'm going to look at developing um ways to calculate load progression in relation to periods and stuff like that to um optimize training around certain things and um you know in different phases whether it's a luteal or follicular phase like what is the difference and understanding that difference and what will what the implication is going to be as a whole on nutrition training recovery everything so yeah well, there's a reason why when i eventually do well not even pluck, when i feel i am ready to be able to coach someone mm-hmm. my specifics will be on digestion nutrition and programming because oh, sure. they're the three main things that interest me and they're the three things I've had to fucking learn for my for myself. Yeah. I've been forced into learning about what is going on with what I'm putting in my body. Mm. Um, because if it's happening to someone who may have certain intolerances, say, then, and these intolerances can be brought up, up upon progressive abuse of certain things then i if i can help someone prevent that or give them the knowledge to go away and maybe have a look at their own nutritional plan or whatever it may be um and adjust accordingly it's something i would love to do it's just it's it's not something that i feel i've invested enough time into yet in order to be able to to coach someone successfully so I think this is cool because even having this conversation, like all three of us have slightly different, mm. you know, areas that we are more expert in than others. Like for me, my full time work is and always has been since uni in the supplement industry. And so yeah. supplementation is a massive area for me. As I say, blood works and how supplementation and even PEDs can play into that is a massive area of interest for me. And the fact that we can say, hey, do you know what? Maybe if I've got a question about this or my client has a question about this, I have this person I trust who I can maybe refer them on to or speak to myself, you know? You need to be open and honest about these things. You've heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Me, Sav and Joe creating our own group. (laughs) We call them Muscle Head Mentors. Uh, We'll be taking on coaching clients soon. And doing seminars. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. It's um, with, a, with a muscular tutors, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> muscular tutors, yes. I think it's like, I, I. this is why, like, the other day when I was in here in the gym with Tim, I spent like half an hour before training talking about coaching for this exact reason. Yeah. I think it's very important for coaches 
um, especially in this day and age, to connect and constantly expand their knowledge by talking to other people and getting other opinions. And like the big thing as well is like Joe, I like sure enough, I I've I've like done a prep myself. I know how that feels. I've gone about that. There's no way though I can willingly or like there's no way that I can correctly assess someone who's got severe dietary issues that are causing them to like have bad reactions that could put them in hospital like you can yeah. like if that sort of client comes to me i've got no fucking clue and yeah. i think and that's yeah that's very important to realize is that like you have your own niche there i have my own it's niche an- so i've definitely another, has our own niche another reason why this sunday i'm doing the patrick tour seminar yeah i want to learn from people who've done the fucking business for years mm. um Sure. And I know it's specifying on mm-hmm. contest prep and and lipolipids and everything like that. So it's going to be interesting for me to to watch that. It'll be fun. Mate, when you get round to doing um, nutrition on your degree, you're going to rip your net lecture a new one. I'm Go doing on. it at the minute, and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> horrendous and at uni level. I've, I've got, it's um, fucking awful. I've got, I've got an assignment during for Friday, and I haven't, I haven't started it. Yeah, but, but I find it very difficult to apply myself to something if I already know more than what I'm supposed to write. What is your assignment anyway? Like 1,500 words, 2,000 words? To this one, yeah, it's the um, the digestibility of macros. Oh, mate, that's fucking piss. What? <laughs> that's almost like PT qual shit. Like, yep. yeah. yeah, I remember first lecture, it's like, so there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate. And you sat <laughs> yeah. there like... I've been trading for years. I've known this since day one. Why are you yeah. telling me this? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I, I, it gets, it does, it will, it does get better, but it takes until like you're in third year, like where I'm at, where it yeah. actually gets fucking interesting. And they just say, yeah, you go away and do your own shit. You do yeah. your own, you just That's go the ahead. I'm looking forward to it. That's why I'm forcing myself to yeah. apply myself right now because I know yeah. a little bit further on. It's going to give me the, the ability to actually do what the fuck I'm interested yeah. in. Like my last um, nutrition report that I did was a 3,000 word report on uh, nutritional recommendation, recommendations for natural bodybuilding prep. Sounds like something I would do. Fucking <laughs> awesome. It was great fun. It was like the most fun assignment I've done ever because it's just like you get to choose your own shit and like you're at a point where you're talking more about like um like your glut for and your transporter hormones and like how 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 your body actually processes that shit well Uh, before we finish the podcast i was i was saying to the uh to the lecturer talking about um pancreatic burnout due to insulin and mm. and whatever so i i I raised a question to her theoretically obviously you couldn't use this in the in the real world but you know if you used exogenous insulin in micro dosages alongside heavy carbohydrate meals to prevent the pancreas working um, and secreting its own insulin, uh, would that be an appropriate measure of potentially prolonging pancreatic burnout and insulin sensitivity? Yeah. And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly why people use lantus in the off season to just yeah. take stress off the pancreas. Yeah. yeah. You know, you take your long acting, then you'll maybe use a short acting peri yep. workout. Yeah. Yep. But these people, years. these lecturers that we've got at uni level, they've not actually gone away and done their own research like no. we have, and they haven't done it for the past two, three decades. Which yeah. is what um, we- I had an entire. Um, what am I on? I'm on three percent. Like, so okay. Yeah, <laughs> ergogenic aids. If you have that in your degree. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. It's literally like, do you like sex education when you're like eight years old? Yeah. So like you have a whiteboard and it's like, tell us names of different PEDs. And there's these kids like, trend, trend. And like, they couldn't tell you if it's a tablet. They couldn't tell you if you inject it. But they're just like throwing out these words that they've heard around gyms. And you sat there like, please stop, stop. Please. <laughs> yeah, I've had that before. Well, when we would, we had to do a fucking like, a few What's sessions. That, 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 what what my... were you using, mate? Diana Trend? Yeah, that one. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> we had to use like Trend Control uh... 3000. Yeah, that one. <laughs> By optimum nutrition, yeah. Diana 69. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All that shit. All that good shit right there. <laughs> yeah, no, we had a um I think it was in second year. 
we did a module and it was on performance enhancement in sport. Yeah. And I hated it because I was the token bodybuilder in my class. Everyone directed the questions at me. Yeah. The entire time. Well, and anytime yeah. I answered something or said something and it was obviously correct and yeah. the lecture actually knew what it was. How'd you know that? They were like, yeah, how'd you know that, Jermaine? Hey, <laughs> fucking fake natty. Hey? Like that. It was just like, you fucking pricks. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it's, like a lot. Um, it's just, we, I think we forget how much time we passively invest in learning about yeah. what the fuck we're interested in. So I've been look, I've been watching podcasts on, on nutrition and training and shit since I was 15. Yeah. And even though that's not formal education, you know, it, it stays in there for a long time. Well, neither is your parents and family, but you learn more them from them than you do school. So exactly, you know. Any final thoughts, Sav? Because my phone's going to die. No, I won't bore you with any there more rafflings. <laughs> Joe's sideways. <laughs> sake. Joe's had a Red Bull. Jose's gone now. Bye, bye, Jose. I think his battery might have died. It's right. happening again, you mean people are just leaving you. I can't deal with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll end it here then, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, this has actually gotten a bit deeper into a bunch of topics than I thought it would. I thought it was just going to be talking about I don't know licking like assholes room, all yeah. session. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a shit show. I thought Caitlin was going to turn up. We we're going to have a bunch of foot like picture questions and all that shit. But no, it's been quite tame. Uh, so. Thank you, everyone, for listening and or watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, Sav, do you want to plug yourself? Um, yep, so Savannah Westerby. sex joke, sorry. <laughs> Carry on. Savannah Westerby on Instagram. Um, I'm accepting clients at the Merman. And if you want to grab one of these sick hoodies, well, not this exact one, because it's for limited edition, but a pancake press pizza hoodie, you can use Sav10 at checkout with them. Would you um would you be willing to sell that exact hoodie for any amount of money? To the right buyer and for the right price, you can buy anything. Everyone has their price. Sav's is mar- remarkably low. I uh, will end it on. Price is roll at three thousand. <laughs> we'll end it there for fuck's sake. Right. Thank <laughs> you guys for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.